We have previously looked at approximately modeling the discrete time part of a digital control system from the view of the continuous time part. In this video, we'll use it to design a digital controller by emulation. For design by emulation, we use a two-step procedure. We first design a continuous time controller to control a continuous time plant, and then we discretize the controller so that it behaves approximately the same as the continuous time controller. This page shows the procedure for digital controller design by emulation. For the first step, we assume that the control system is a purely analog control system and we design a suitable continuous time controller to control the continuous time plant. To design the continuous time controller, we can use any appropriate controller design techniques such as root locus design or frequency response design. I assume that you are familiar with these and will not discuss them further. For the second step, we discretize the continuous time controller to find a discrete time controller that behaves similarly to the designed continuous time controller. When we compare the analog control system configuration with the digital control system configuration, we require that the combination of the sampler, discrete time controller and zero order hold circuit behave similarly to the continuous time controller. If we ignore the reference input, we can draw the process of discretization as shown, where we take the designed continuous controller and find a discrete time controller such that the combination of the sampler, controller and zero order hold circuit behave similarly to the continuous time controller. We have previously seen that the sample and hold circuit, which is the case when the discrete controller is a gain, can be approximated as a gain or a pure time delay. What we have also seen is that it is not possible to get an exact continuous time model for the sample and hold. For more complex continuous controllers, it will not be possible to find discrete time controllers such that the sampler, continuous controller and zero order hold behaves exactly like the continuous controller. We therefore have to make approximations. There are several discretization methods available, each with its own approximations or assumptions. In this video, we will look at two of those impulse invariant and step invariant discretizations and we will look at two other methods next time. Let's look at the impulse invariant discretization which is also called the matched pole zero technique. For this method we start with a designed continuous controller. We make two approximations. Firstly that the input signal can be approximated by the sampled input signal and secondly that the output signal can be approximated by the output signal that is passed through a sample and hold circuit. The motivation for the first approximation is that if we sample fast enough, the sampled signal will contain most of the frequency information of the input signal. And if the controller has a low pass filter behavior, putting the sampled signal into the controller will have the same effect as putting the input signal into the controller. For the second approximation, we have seen previously that a sample and hold circuit behaves approximately the same as a gain of 1. Given these two approximations, we now want to find a discrete controller that behaves the same as this section, where we pass impulses into the continuous controller and sample the output. The discrete controller is preceded by a sampler and is followed by a zero order hold circuit as is required by the digital control configuration. The discretization we wish to do is shown here where we want to find a discrete controller that reacts the same way to an impulse as a continuous controller followed by a sampler. To do this discretization, we first find the impulse response of the continuous controller by applying the inverse Laplace transform to the controller transfer function. We then 
sample the impulse response and trivially convert from the impulse train model of a sampled signal to a purely discrete signal. It is shown in this step. Lastly, we find the transfer function of the discrete controller by applying the Z-transform to the discrete impulse response. The process can be written in a single line where we first take the inverse Laplace transform of the continuous transfer function, then select the values of the signal at the sampling instance, and lastly taking the Z-transform. Although it is not technically correct, we will also write it briefly as the Z-transform of the continuous transfer function. To illustrate the impulse invariant discretization, let's look at a simple example. Suppose the designed continuous controller is given by 1 over s plus a. After applying the inverse Laplace transform, we calculate the continuous impulse response as e to the minus a t. The sampled impulse response is given by e to the minus a k t, where t is the sampling period, and after applying the z-transform, we get the transfer function of the discrete controller as z over z minus e to the at. We will usually read off the transformations from Laplace transform and z-transform tables. An interesting thing to note here is that the continuous pole is at minus a, while the discrete pole is at e to the minus at. We can therefore think of the impulse invariant discretization as transforming continuous poles to discrete poles using this transformation. It is the same relationship between continuous and discrete poles we have seen before. Let's now move on to the second discretization method, the so-called step invariant discretization. For this method, we also make two approximations. Firstly, that the input signal can be approximated by the input signal passed through a sample and hold circuit, and the output signal can be approximated by the output signal passed through a sample and hold circuit. Both approximations rely on the fact that a sample and hold circuit can be approximated by a gain of 1. Given these two approximations, we now want to find a discrete controller that behaves the same as this section, where we pass impulses into a zero-order hold circuit followed by the continuous controller and then sample the output. The discrete controller is again preceded by a sampler and followed by a zero-order hold circuit as is required by the digital control configuration. The step invariant discretization is drawn here where we want to find a discrete controller that has the same impulse response as a zero order hold circuit followed by the continuous controller of which the output is sampled. The discrete controller can therefore be calculated in this line where we first multiply the transfer function of the zero order hold and the transfer function of the continuous controller. Then we take the inverse Laplace transform to find the continuous impulse response. Then we sample the signal to obtain the sampled impulse response. And lastly, we apply the Z transform. We can again informally write down the same process as the Z transform of the product of the zero order hold and continuous controller transfer functions. We have previously calculated the zero order hold transfer function as 1 minus e to the minus st over s, which allows us to separate this expression into two terms. e to the minus st has the meaning of a delay of one sampling period described in the Laplace domain. This translates to the z transform of dA over s times z to the minus 1, which is a one time step delay in the z domain. After combining these two terms again, we get this expression for the step invariant discretization. To illustrate this discretization method, let's work through the same simple example where the continuous controller is given by 1 over s plus a. 
dA over S is written here. And from Laplace transform tables, we read of the inverse Laplace transform, which is sampled here. Using Z transform tables, we calculate the Z transform of dA over S, as shown here. The discrete controller is then given by 1 minus z to the minus 1 times that. And after some simplifications, we get this transfer function. We have now looked at two discretization methods to obtain a discrete controller that behaves similarly to a designed continuous controller. In the next video, we will look at two other discretization methods.